So I'd like to welcome you all to our regular council meeting of October the 23rd at 8 p.m. To my far right, I have our uh, assistant city clerk, Jason Prevost. I have Councillor Torgman, Councillor Sabag, Councillor Cohen, myself, your mayor, Mitchell Brownson, Councillor Berku, Councillor Kajaski, the city manager, Tanya Bramovich, associate city manager, Nadia DeFuria, co-city manager, Jonathan Schechter. So our first item on today's agenda is a very pleasant one. Um, we're issuing emergency medical services exemplary service medals. But before I do that, there's one thing that I do want to make mention of. I know we had a memorial for Ruth Kovac prior to this meeting. She is dearly missed. We have a vacant spot sitting next to me and it's with uh, a very, very deep emotions that we're going to be proceeding on our first public council meeting without her. I also want to acknowledge the passing of um, a young man, a 29-year-old uh, member of our Parks and Recreation team, Sean Waysgrass, who was an integral part of Parks and Recreation, and we lost him suddenly, um, also just in the last uh, weeks. So our, our um, condolences go out to um, his father, Victor, his, his, his mother, Elaine, and the entire family. Um, now I'm going to ask, um, let me get my notes on uh, this item. So I'll start off, and then I'm going to pass it over to Councillor Sabag. So the Emergency Medical Services Exemplary Medal was created on July the 7th, 1994 by the Governor General to recognize professionals in the provision of pre-hospital emergency medical services to the public who have performed their duties in an exemplary manner characterized by good conduct, industry, and efficiency. Recipients must have completed 20 years of exemplary service, including at least 10 years in the performance of duties involving potential risk. Councillor Sabag, you can continue on. Alors, sur l'envers de la médaille et l'étoile de la vie, superposée sur une feuille d'érable et circonscrite avec service distingué, exemplary service. Une barre dotée d'une feuille d'érable stylisée et décernée à un récipiendaire de la médaille pour chaque période supplémentaire de service de 10 ans avec les services médicaux d'urgence. In Côte saint luc we have the privilege to award, we've had the privilege to award 14 such medals uh, to our members of EMS who have dedicated more than 20 years of service to our community. <laughs> Today, we are honored to be able to add, to add two more names to this list. On a personal note, I want to say that my first ride along was with these two and it was quite uh, a pleasant surprise to see the dynamic, the synergy and the professionalism of these two. Mr. Mayor, I'm honored to present the EMS Exemplary Service Medal of, on behalf of the Governor General, Her Excellency, the Right Honorable Julie Payette, to Joy Rogers and Howard Wong, who took their EMS class together starting in February 1999 and have been partners ever since. Joy has taken on different portfolios, including recruiting and quality assurance. Howard has been involved in teaching, and logistics, and to this day, you can find them on shifts together on Sunday evenings. So if it is only fitting that we award these two deserving members their exemplary service medal of honor, uh, medal together. Mr. Mayor, it is my honor to represent EMS on the, uh, on the City Council, and I am so proud of each and every one of our volunteers, whether they have been with EMS for 20 days or 20 years, each of our EMS members makes a vital contribution to the well-being of our city and our citizens. Thank you. Jordan Howard.
Councillor Burku. All right, so um, we're going to get to the next item, which is question period, but I'd like all the councillors to sit down, please, and join us. All right, so we're going to start question period. I know it's a little late this evening. I'm going to ask for everybody's uh, cooperation. You know that question period is a time to ask questions. Uh, you have uh, a time limit, and you... Then you have a rebuttal period where you can ask a second question if you need to, but we're going to try to keep to the time limit and uh, answer your questions to the best of our ability. Our first question for the evening is Alan Levine. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, banks give mortgages every five years for a five-year period, sometimes for a 10-year period. But we have this insanity called the three-year roll which comes up every three years, and during this role, some people are subjected to um, very great increases, far greater than the normal uh, increases in the average home for the city. I was wondering if, Mr. Mayor, you would take the issue of changing the three-year role to a five- or a 10-year role in order to, for people to better budget um, for their homes. What do you think of this, Mr. Mayor? Okay. I can certainly bring it up to the Association of Suburban Mayors. Um, however, as you do know, no matter what happens with the roll, we always adjust the meal rate so that we can maintain the tax rate below the rate of inflation. So the roll does have an effect for sure, especially if you're in the upper category, not the average. Um, but we always try to adjust uh, the meal rate so that people can have the average increase below the rate of inflation. But there are aberrations where some people suffer quite badly, so they cannot budget, and I don't think that's fair. Okay? Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for your idea. Uh, Bernard Cohen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you to uh, this council for letting me speak for, uh, very, for this issue. Uh, the issue is about field availabilities at uh, Gary, uh, Trude uh, Gary Carter Park, Trudeau, okay. the main yes. baseball field, hard, hardball. Um, myself and my co-captain have built a team uh, five years ago. We've been playing the majority of the time in the West Island League, West Island Senior League. Uh, we've, every year we've tried to call the city to book for ourselves uh, a fixed slot to have for the season. Every season we are told that is not possible. And every season, we've seen that the, the league, the West End League, has been getting more and more slots. Today, I'm comfortable to say that they have a monopoly on everything, except for youth and university. But senior league, they have all the slots. Uh, today, again, I tried to go see uh, the Parks and Recreation Department. I've been again told, said no. Half of our team, and even more of that, is from Cote St. Luke. I'm born and raised in Cote St. Luke. I played in this park my whole childhood. What's the, name trying, your, what's the name of your league? The, the uh, BWISL, which is the West Island Senior League with Michael Beaton. Okay. Again, which we are, which we would like to not be, if we can't, if we don't play with him, we have no choice. So that's why I don't feel this, it's a right that we uh, have no ability to get at least one or two slots. We've been trying for a long time and he has the majority of the slots. Okay. Well, thank you. Oh, oh Councilor uh, oh, Sabag has an answer. So I Go just, um, so I'm, being a baseball fan and having played uh, with this particular league myself, um, you're right, they, they do uh, organize very early in the season. They're able to uh, reserve spots also very early in the seasons. What I can tell you is that I've also been a chair of a uh, league, not a league, but a, um, a tournament uh, myself. Uh, and we wanted to have uh, the park reserved and we did it um, early enough. We did it before the West Island League actually did their, um, their um, schedule back in December, January. So I think it's just about timing. I think you should voice if you can get some slots early enough. Um, and, and the city should work to, to enable uh, all different leagues to, to have different days available. The West Island League is a very big league. It's a very they, they don't just use Cote St. Luke Park, they use a lot of other yes. parks as well at the same time. So obviously we want to make sure that they have 
uh, you know, a, a proper schedule. But you're right, if you have your own league and you do it early enough, maybe you can email me, let's discuss I was this. But, say that. Uh, so why don't you email yeah. the details, you can copy me as well, it's always, it's our first initial mm -hmm. name at kotsunuk.org, you'll see it on our website, email me all the details, we'll share it with Parks and Recreation and see what they have to say in terms of the manner in which you should proceed. Okay, just to finish up on the point, yes, of course, uh, every year, exactly, we always thought that maybe we, we were taking too late in the season, we got in February, March, but this year, I mean, it's October. That's why I, I tried okay. to, to see. I'll share your concerns with Parks and Recreation, but give me the details in an email so I can share something in writing with them. Thank okay? you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Monique Asulen. <laughs> Welcome. Hi, so I'm Monique Asulin, I have to give my address, 6017 Freud. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Councillors. On September 18th, we participated in a meeting with the lawyer and architect of Titan, the developers who will be building a third structure on a small piece of land between Cavendish and Freud, a land that they own. Present at the meeting were the mayor, Councillor Berku, Charles Senecal, and several residents of Freud Street of District 8 who are here with me tonight. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity you gave us to speak with them. However, we don't feel that the meeting was fully fruitful, and we haven't heard from the city ever since. The building plans were approved by the city prior to opening up the conversation with us mere residents and have many concerns, we have many concerns especially about potential damages to our properties as we have seen damages to the properties on Mark Chagall when the adjacent building was built. I emailed you all today with a list of concerns that we hope you will take into consideration. The city does not impose penalties when a developer doesn't build on time. In fact, the developer can ask for an extension for a building permit which means that we will be living in a mess for an indefinite time period. Also noted in the meeting was that although the builder is entitled to build six to eight stories, the city doesn't impose any height restrictions. They will be building eight stories plus penthouse, but we couldn't find the bylaws that allow, that allow for the extra penthouse level, and there are no height restrictions as far as we're concerned. So please email that bylaw to us that allows for the extra penthouse level. There was also a mention at the meeting of a penthouse derogation, but we didn't see the published article anywhere as it was mentioned that they would be published, so maybe it was canceled. Um, I would like to suggest that the city review and modify bylaws, existing bylaws, to clarify and be more precise and impose penalties to enforce restrictions in the future. I am here tonight to put on record that we object to the project the way it was approved, and we will be monitoring the whole thing closely before and during construction. I would like to add that it's also concerning that many families around Kutzenluk are looking to rent three bedroom units across the city and the building was approved to only have one and two bed bedroom units. So my questions are, was the project finally officially approved and did you and the developers take into consideration all our recommendations from that night? What stage of the project, what, what stage are you at with the project and has the building permit already been issued? Before Council Burgo answers, because I know she, she's in charge of the file, um, I just want to say, first of all, thank you for emailing us all those questions because we have a hard copy of everything I think you just said and I, I received it late in the day yes. and our intention is to respond to all of your questions mm -hmm. but we haven't had the chance. So uh, I do appreciate that and that's a very good way to proceed so we're able to definitely give you a full response. But I will uh, let Councillor Burke who... Uh, Thank you, uh, Monique. Um, we did receive your, your email. I think most of the councillors received it. Mm -hmm. And um, I was in the process of answering you, but I first um, wanted to go through all your questions because you have a lot of detailed questions mm -hmm. there, and so we want to prepare detailed answers. But big picture is when we left that meeting and after the residents left the room, um, and Charles and I, and I think, I, I, I don't, I think uh, the Mitch, no, but you would left by then. In any event, in any event, the, the, the architect did undertake, and it was very honest and sincere, to review the orientation of the building. Great. Okay? Um, we didn't get an answer till like a day or two ago, and he has some considerations and so on and so forth. So what I immediately told the urban planning department is what we need to do is we need to take his response, we need to review it in council, and then advise the residents of what the status is. And I told him we're not gonna do anything until we go back to the residents. And it's like, 
Okay, telepathy. So it's still ongoing. Okay. You, exactly. You you wrote us, and it's exactly what I intended to do. That we're going to review what he, you know, the response we got, and in the process, we'll, we can answer all your questions. But I think a lot of those questions were answered because engineering gave you a lot of answers about the traffic and the yeah, orientation. We'll okay, so we'll give it to you. We'll give it to you now in writing. The penthouse is absolutely uh, legal. There's nothing uh, non-conforming about it. Uh, that's the way it is. It's six no, but there was stories a derogation, plus right? a penthouse. Pardon? There was a the derogation is still was is still there. So I asked Urban Planning, can it when can it come back mm. if it's ready to come back? And because it need because of legal requirements for it and the delays, it will come back in December. So we have between now and the December meeting to meet to, <laughs> to discuss it as a council, and then to come back to you and to explain to you or to. To, to review with you all the, the issues. And that was that was what what the plan was. Okay. And so I will do that uh, in the next week. We look forward to your answers by Thank email. You. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Toby Shulman. Bonjour, hi everybody. Bonjour, hi. Um, my first topic has to do with benches. I'd like to know the reason why the director of public works, I want to know what, what she has against moving a few benches. We have so many extra benches unused around the city, especially at Elie Wiesel Parquet. Why do seniors like myself, who walk to and fro City Hall to Cavendish Mall, have to wait until the 2020 budget, as the director emailed me, before a few benches can be placed along the avenue between Cavendish and the main entrance to the mall. Why can't they be moved now? Okay. So first of all, we don't, I mean, as you know, and you thanked me, I think, at a previous meeting for getting you a bench at the last location you wanted it. And we certainly want to have as many benches as we possibly can to accommodate seniors. We don't necessarily like to move benches because when we place them in a certain location, we put them there for a reason. So we don't ideally like to move, but we certainly <laughs> like to add benches as we want to accommodate the seniors and any individual with disabilities or any other need to sit down to have a bench. So, I understand the director's response that you received, but we are going through budget now, and I'm going to take it under uh, your suggestion that we discuss the issue of benches in our budget discussions that are coming up every Monday for the next five, six weeks. So, um, take note of that uh, in the minutes, please, uh, to make, uh, uh, have it as an action item the issue of benches throughout the city, uh, particularly in, in the areas that uh, Toby Shulman has suggested. And perhaps you want to email me again that, that list of areas you're suggesting, and we'll, we'll, we'll consider it, OK? Because right now, it's not in the budget, but who knows, OK? Thank you. Thank you. The second topic has to do with Kerwin Park. I'm very disappointed that it has taken so long for the council to finally decide to do renovations. Kerwin Park is just like any other of Coates and Luke Parks and should not have been ignored for so many years. Can you tell me why Kerwin Park was on the bottom of the park totem pole, so to speak, for so many years? Well, we try to do everything we can and everything's important. Everything's important, but the question is we also need to do our roads. We need a lot to do a lot of our uh, roads. We um, had a lot of projects to do. So, We've had public space meetings. We've had two just in the last month that dealt specifically with Kerwin Park. And our intention is to proceed with Kerwin Park. It's just, a, it was always a question of budget. The, as you know, the uh, tender came in too high in order for us to be able to afford to do everything. So we had to postpone, not cut, postpone um, our renovations to Kerwin Park. And we proceeded with what we could afford this year. We will proceed next, you know, next year as well with other projects. As I said, we're right through budget right now. We're doing all the capital and operating budgets. But Kerwin Park's on it. Thank you. I'm sure that the citizens who live around Kerwin Park will greatly appreciate it. It's going to be, be beautiful done. when it's done. I'm sure. It's be Thank beautiful. you. Thank you. OK, the next uh, questioner is Marissa Seidel. Hi, good evening. Welcome. 
Could you my address? 6521 Bailey. It's okay. okay. You know, when anybody gives me a paper like that, they don't need to say their address because it's on the paper. Great. Thank you. Uh, so I'm coming, I'm coming here today uh, as a business owner on the avenue. Everyone knows that I own the Capitol Avenue. Um, so we've had several conversations with regards to the horrendous state of the building across the street and the fact that it looks like an actual war zone. And while I recognize that that's not the city's fault necessarily, um, I don't see much being done in the way of fining or uh, enforcing the fact that it's, it's an actual danger and health hazard. But it brings me to the question, generally speaking, of business, not only on the avenue, but business in the city uh, itself. Um, I'm sure everybody, certainly the council, I'm sure many of the people here know that rumors are swirling, not uh, the, the worst kept secret in the city, that the mall will eventually in the next few years be demolished in favor of some kind of a condo project. With that in mind, uh, with that in mind, I'm wondering when that happens, if the city's been approached with regards to requests for zoning changes for that. I'm wondering if any of the residents are going to be informed about that. I'm wondering what's going to happen to the small businesses that are in the mall. Um, as you know, um, the food court in the mall, which I'm kind of part of, but not really, um, is known all over the world as one of the you know, largest kosher food suppliers to the growing religious population of the city. Um, and generally speaking, I'm wondering what the small business policy of the city is to encourage businesses like me to stay uh, if one of the main centers of town is soon to be no more. Right. Okay, so thank you for your question, questions. First, with respect to the state of that building, we've had a lot of problems with the developer. We couldn't agree with you more, and we are finding and doing all kinds of things to do the best that we can to push that thing to, to, to a conclusion. With respect to the mall as itself, we have received no zoning requests. Yes, we have in the past received different requests about changes to that site. All the malls, not only that one, to Cary Square, Coats and Luke Shopping Center, the mall, they all have visions, but nothing formally ever requested as a zoning change. But this council, and particularly myself as mayor, have a strong interest in having a town center with business, and I'm a big fan of our kosher food court. So anybody who comes to me uh, with respect to any of their ideas, I keep on reiterating the, those concerns because I share them. I want to have business in that area. I, whatever happens in the future with respect to any of our malls, we need to maintain active commerce. It's needed in our community and we need to keep it. So uh, on that, just to finish my point, um, there, so you, you're saying that the mall... Jason, you want to just restart the thing? Oh, quickly? sorry, I, I won't be much longer, I apologize. So you're saying that, that the mall hasn't approached you with regards to any kind of very like imminent... Uh, Nothing's imminent, no zoning requests. Okay, so um, with regards to small business, as you know, uh, as I'm sure pretty much everybody in this room has in Koh Sing Luke used in-home businesses, a hairdresser, a nail person, a dog groomer, et cetera, et cetera. Well, uh, recently a few of the people uh, that have these businesses in their homes have sort of made it public that they've been visited by um, inspectors or what have you in, in, with a request to shut down their in-home businesses. This is a lifeline for most of the young family or some of the young families in the city and I'm wondering what would be the criteria to say go to home, home A and say you shut your business down, but homes B through Z and redo the alphabet five times over wouldn't have that same um, criteria. Right. Well, the issue is now before council, but the criteria is we get a complaint, obviously. We don't just go there. But uh, the issue is before council to determine what to do with respect to that issue. So council is going to have to decide citywide how they want to handle that issue that you just mentioned. Oh, okay. So you're yeah. aware of it. We're aware of it. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, there are, there's a list of businesses you can have in your house and you can't have in your house right. and when you get a complaint, so we follow up on right. it. But, just but we, like, we have to decide what we want right. to do but, if we want to expand that list. Right, but not that I'm picking certainly on the synagogues, but just like we have a list of official synagogues, but there's a synagogue on every corner. We, when we get a complaint, we go there too. Right, I'm just wondering. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, we right. do. We've just had to with respect to Shtibel. Right, okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, um, Lily Eskovich. Mayor, city councillors, 
I'm here today to ask a question about an incident that happened to me at the ACC a couple of weeks ago. I've already reported the incident to the mayor, city manager, and a couple of councillors. I was standing between the set of front doors of the ACC handing out event, event invitation information to those entering the weekly men's club meeting when I was aggressively approached by two club members, one of them yelling at me. He harangued me by pointing his finger directly in my face, yelling and talking so close to my personal space that I could smell his breath and feel his spittle on me. They both finally left when they realized I would not be bu bullied into leaving. Mr. Mayor, council members. How is it possible that we have an enormous organization in our city which is almost fully supported with our tax money that is permitted to display this type of behavior? This club pays nothing to the city for the use of its space or the services provided by the ACC staff, yet the fact that they can scream and yell and physically threaten someone in a public building as happened to me that morning is very concerning. I would have appreciated had someone from the staff or public security stepped in to rescue me from the men's club bully. I know that this incident was recorded by the ACC security cameras and the city manager has assured me that she has witnessed the footage. I have discussed what I expect from the city which is to arrange an in-person public apology from my accoster in the presence of the mayor and city manager along with the second man who accompanied him and I await a positive conclusion when it is made clear to this group that behavior like this is unacceptable, inappropriate and will not be tolerated. I'm not afraid to admit in front of all these people I'm a senior citizen. Personally, I believe the president of this group, who is not even a resident of Cote St. Luke, should be removed from his post as an example. This group should not have such an unnaturally close relationship with the city that this incident should not be taken seriously. I will finish with a simple yes or no question, Mr. Mayor. Is it acceptable behavior by members and more importantly, the leaders of this city-funded club club in your judgment is this acceptable how he behaved so first of all I'm going to address the issue twofold first of all immediately when you advised me of it I, I wasn't Abs able I was unable to deal with it personally so I handed it over to Councilor Sabag and to the city manager. mayor no no please don't the, no no I want to tell you that yeah. your your councillors and your city manager particularly were fantastic that's great and it and they're doing their investigation and doing proper follow-up but the issue before me is how an individual acted in our ACC. I don't care whether he's a president yeah. or a member of a club or mm -hmm. whatever. Two. The issue mm -hmm. is how the individual mm -hmm. acted in our building mm -hmm. when staff was at the front office mm -hmm. and whether there was a follow-up required. Mm -hmm. That's it. We don't accept inappropriate behavior in our buildings by anyone. Mm -hmm. And if there was an inappropriate behavior by an individual towards you, it's being investigated by the city manager, Councilor Sabag, and follow-up will take place with respect to that individual that you've given that person's name so we know who it is. And, um, and, and, and we're, they're following up, but, but it's nothing, but I'm not gonna go beyond that because we can't hold organizations or anybody responsible Mr. For Mayor, I just no need you to assure me that this is obnoxious behavior and you I'm, have, I'm that's speaking. fine. But yeah. your version of it is obnoxious. I can't confirm it's it. It's on film. It's I, on I film, ask Tanya. This is, just, this is not a back and go. You've already yeah. gone three times, you're only allowed to go twice, okay? So. I am saying that the city is taking the matter that you raised very seriously. I'm not going to, I'm not like a judge and jury, I wasn't there. They're taking it very seriously and they are following up. And, and, and you'll, be you'll be advised of the follow-up. I should, as, as you're saying, you're not going to paint the entire group with these two people. I should, I should tell you that two week, a week, one week before, I was upstairs in the ACC handing out information as the men were leaving. This, this happened as I was handing out stuff when the men were coming in. But a week before I was upstairs handing out stuff when, when the men were leaving. And I got the height of, you know what, from four or five different men and none of them were these two. So that's seven now. So this is, this is absolutely um, an acceptable mood by these gentlemen, and I use the word very loosely, gentlemen, because they are not. Everybody's responsible for their own behavior, and we yeah. will follow it up. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Irving Itman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, bonjour, hi. Bonjour, hi. And how meaningful it is and I'll speak about that after the questions. 
I'd like to have some clarification. I took a few months off. You know, I attended auctions where numbers used to go up. I, I but never seen... But they don't hear, so ask the question. You know, no, no, forget about that. I wasn't no, here no, a few months, so it. put question. it for 10 minutes. Ask the question. Okay, clarification, please. But give me answers as Ruth would give answers. Kerwin Park, Arangazokt, you know? <laughs> Kerwin Park. I don't accept the answer you gave, Toby. The question of budget, there is money. Two and a half million for Trudeau Park. Then the Chachamim forgot about shaded areas and you put in how much? Over 500,000? You found the money. Schusterman Park, a million and a half a few years ago, so it's worth more now. The gentleman that became councillor of District 5, that was his promise to the people. We had, an appoint, we had a meeting with the, with the city manager, December of 2017. That's two years now coming up, and still no, no plans. Can you give us some clarification? We have wonderful plans, and the... Wonderful plans we no, know. No, give no, me... Interrupt. Don't interrupt. Sorry. You asked your question. Yeah. So we, we have plans, as I said, we did. We had two meetings just in the last few weeks. And in that particular case, when we were trying to do Kerwin Park last year, the budget came in over one point, what is it? I'm going to read your writing. 1.6 million, 1.6 million over budget. So it's not that we didn't have a budget, but when we came in 1.6 million dollars over budget, we didn't have, we didn't have that 1.6 million. What is the million. clarification for future? When? Moshiach is coming soon. We're, we, our plan no, no. is we're, we're going through budget now. Eh? Bud our budget meetings are over the next five weeks. Okay. But Kerwin Park is in that budget discussions for the next year. And we have the new, the new plans and everything reviewed. And we're going to go back to tender. And hopefully, with our ideas, we should hopefully come within budget. Let's hope. So you're talking about possible redevelopment in 2023? No, we're doing Kerwin Park next. It's the next yes, park. Yes, yes. Finished. It's the next park. When approximately would it be finished? We're hoping to do it next, next year. We'll see how it it's goes. It's impossible to, the to get it finished next well, year. Well, it will be tendered and then it will be for the next year. It won't be finished, but we're going to, we'll go to tender in, in 2020. <laughs> tendered in 2020. Construction when? The next year. 2021. Yeah. Assuming it comes in under budget. Budget again. Like, oh, 100%. It's always budget. All right, that's one. So you have 10 seconds left on your questions. I, I don't. That's, yeah, that's I do. So do you have another question? Or do you have a supplementary question to my answer? We're going to go through this again, Irving, all the time. It's always, Listen, it happened with I, you I last time for you all of mad us. at me that I cut you off. But you know the rules. I'm prayed for all of us. Remember, you prayed to al -Khet. So give me a break. You have all one right? more question, but keep it short. All right. Clarification. There are many, many burnt out light street lights. It's now approaching winter. The answer that is given, and some people came to me just uh, over a month ago, before I went to Toronto, that there's only one electrician in the city. Is that true? <coughs> we have one main electrician. Eh? Uh, we do have one uh, person re responsible as our main electrician, yeah. We have three? We have three electricians. All right. Can we ask the councillors of the various districts to make sure that the lights are working within the next month? It's only a bulb. <laughs> I think everybody wants the lights to work. Okay. It's a question of getting them done. We certainly want all our lights to work. All right. I'd like to now seriously... I, I want to compliment you and whoever was responsible for creating the memorial for Ruth Oliver Shalom. I think it was very, very well done. You mentioned about seats. I remember being at, a, at a, one of the meetings and I said, boy, who was responsible for these wonderfully beautiful, uh, this wonderful, beautiful new carpets? And Ruth says, you see, somebody did notice. All right? So really. Uh, there's, 
I, I forgot to mention my few words that she was a friend who was what I declare family. And her Shabbat bouquets meant so much to so many. It's not a question of religiosity. It's a question of bringing in a certain spirit for Shabbat, a certain tranquility. And this is something that many, many people uh, look forward to and continue to look forward to. Thank really. you. Thank you, Thank Mr. You Rittman. And we hope to see those flowers continue by the Kovac family. Thank you. Um, oh, it started over again. Jeffrey Kovac. <laughs> Jeffrey Kovac. Uh, Mitch Kajavsky. Yes, Kajavsky was a response to Councilor Kajavsky, if necessary. Just very quickly time. about Irving's with, with regards to streetlights. I thought we had everything in District 5 covered. If there are still burnt out lights, you can do two things. You can just email me the number on the poll or email Public Works and copy me on it. I thought we had everything, but if there's still burnt out lights, I don't know what to tell you. Do it again. Thank you. It'll be changed. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Councillor Kajavsky. And now, Jeffrey Kovac. Irving, I will gladly send you flowers on Friday nights. I'm going to make sure that this is formed in a question because I am very familiar with um, that this is not a statement period, but this is a question period, so I will follow up the statement with a question. Councillors and Mayor Mitchell Brownstein, having grown up in Cote St. Luke, being given so much from this city in so many ways, it's now time to continue the agenda that the woman who used to sit next to you, Mitchell, my late mother, set forth for nearly three decades. My entire family has always been very adamant about civic duty, and it's something that I hope to pass on to my children as well. The city of Cote St. Luke District 8 lost a champion of representation on October 1st, 2019, and I hope to follow in those footsteps and fight to help alongside all of you to enhance life in what I consider, and I'm sure what all of you consider, the best city in Montreal to live in. For this reason, I am officially announcing my candidacy for Councillor of Cote St. Luke District 8. There is still work to be done that unfortunately my mom never got a chance to complete. But I promise, if given the mandate to continue, that I will work with every one of you as a team, like my mother would so adamantly make sure of, with passion, integrity, diligence that's been passed on to me, ultimately just to help improve the lives of all Code St. Luke residents. So my question to you, Mitchell, Mayor Brownstein, is to just please let me know when you will be able to be calling the by-election for the vacant seat of District 8. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeffrey, and I, I wish you the best of luck. Um, it's not for me to decide. We have a president of the election, which is our assistant city clerk, Jason Prevot. And Good evening. He, um, Hi, Jason. He's the man to ask all those questions. It's independent. It's, it's from the province down to him, and he runs all that. So if you want to respond at all, that's, that's it. So I'm going to be the returning officer for the upcoming by-election. As Mayor Brownstein mentioned, it's a complete separate issue, council and running the election. Um, as of right now, we don't have a set date, um, but we're currently finalizing with the Ministère des Affaires Municipales the date that's going to be set. Um, once we get the date, which should be within the next week or so, it will be, um, council will be advised of the, of the date and the public as well would be advised of it. So okay. it will be obviously in 2020. Um, I can't tell you exactly when, but um, it should be approximately between February and April around that time. But anybody has not any, set right now. Anybody who has any questions about the election, they can contact yeah, Mr. Prevo anytime. Directly. Contact me directly if you have any questions. With Thank you, Jason. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Councilor Torchman. And I just want to <coughs> clarify that, that Council has no input on the date. It's, it's strictly the, mm -hmm. the returning officer. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay, our first candidate. <clears throat> All right. So now, uh, if there's no further questions, there is another question. Can I ask a follow-up question to Urban's question? To whose question? 
Irving, really, really, everybody's had a chance to question. You're supposed to give your name and, and address, but since you have not asked a question, please come forward and you can ask your question. The lady who has not spoken yet, please. And give your name and, and address, please. Good evening. I'm sorry I couldn't find somebody with the paper because That's okay. It was so What's your crowded. name and address? Vipke Scheidt, 6505 Kotzingluck Road. Okay. I was I was here last month um, talking about global warming and how the city of Kurzengluck could make a, could make a difference. The city has acquired the status of smart city, and I strongly believe that at this point the city Kurzengluck can become a great example of a green city. At the last council meeting, I asked how or how more meadows meadows can be created. I was told that this issue would be brought to public words, the horticultural environmental technician, and I believe you're just appointing some or you're looking for the job. It's on the agenda tonight. Exactly, yeah. Uh, as I said, I spoke about meadows and have since personally observed a few vacant lots, lawns, and public spaces in Kutzenglück. In the summer, these lots and public spaces which I assume Code St. Luke wants to maintain as manicured spaces, but unfortunately they became hot islands, looking brown and dead due to awfully short cut grass. I suggest that instead of maintaining today's short cut lawns, colorful meadows can and should be created at this time. Among other horticultural, environmentally friendly... We, we got the question last time, we have it again, and my best recommendation for you, and I'll put you in contact with the person that we're just hiring tonight, and you can meet with them directly with your ideas. Okay, will do. Um, another citizen spoke last month uh, and requested that gas-powered mowers and gas-powered leaf blowers could not, should not be used anymore in the city, which is also my concern regarding air and noise pollution. My question is, have there been any decisions on this issue, and how can I be informed of the progress? With respect to the meadows, I'll let you speak with the new person hired. With respect to leaf blowers, we haven't banned them at this time, but it's something that we're always considering what to do. It is a problem that we acknowledge exists. Good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the last questioner. Sharon Friedman, you can write your name and address. Good evening, Sharon everyone. Uh, I still can't get over losing Ruth. She was a phenomenal advocate. I feel like I really lost a great person who always, when I wrote something on Facebook, but the elderly or this we need, she was, she was there. So, um, and the last thing she did, which is in relation to the bench, the person still here, I came back from Italy, of course, my beloved Italy, which uh, is like I feel it's my second home after Cote St. Luke. All over Italy, they have, and it's carbon, carbon free, it's a bicycle with benches that you get in and out of, they're called velos. Now I know we have snow, I'll bring you pictures next time and I'm going to prepare my questions better. Um, they have the velos everywhere, like in the piazza in Milan, because the shopping center is like the, the size of Cote St. Luke, and if you want to then go to the Eldomo, it's very far. All you do is you get into one of these little velos that can seat two or four, and they're fabulous. They're a, like a tricycle with benches in the back, covered and they take you from one place to another. Ruth and I, I think Dita was there, when we went to a meeting on needing desperately a shuttle of some kind for our seniors, right? Do you remember the meeting? Ruth was after me, I can't believe it, women wanting it, but I thought of the velos because there's no gas, you can give okay. jobs. I like the idea. Oh, Send I have pictures, pictures all over pictures. my Facebook. We'll, we'll share it with Valerie Plant. But yeah, and we'll look at it, and we'll look at it. We'll look at it seriously. Okay, I'll bring it. That's. But it's, uh, send me those pictures. I'd be interested to see what that is. Okay, so Thank maybe you. we could get them for, I know, six months of the Who year. Who knows? Year. We maybe we'll be a leader. And I'll prepare my next question Thank better. Thank, Thank you. you. So um, I'd like to move to the next item, which is the approval of the minutes. Councillor Cohen. Is your oh, mic? Maybe your mic's not on with the... the 
I so move, Mr. Mayor, the minutes of the special council meeting of September 9th. Move, um, you can move them all. Add the minutes of the regular meeting of September 9th as well, and the minutes from the special council meeting of September 23rd, 2019. Seconded by Councillor Sabag. Any discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried, and we move to business arising from the minutes. Any business? Okay, we move to item number three, departmental reports. Councillor Sabag. I don't have one. You move, you to uh, move the oh, sorry, to move. No, to move, the, move them? Okay. Yes, move. so moved, Mr. Mayor. So moved, Councillor Sabag, seconded by Councillor Cohen. Any discussion on the department reports? Councillor Cohen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just to let everybody know that uh, tomorrow night is our uh, Cats Meow concert uh, fundraiser, and looks like we're finally going to have a concert without a heat wave. I hope there's not going to one coming tomorrow. We're basically sold out at this point. Um, so thanks to everyone who's worked so hard for us to continue our work uh, rescuing the homeless cats in our community. Uh, as well, um, I want to thank Public Works for the wonderful job they've done. Uh, after many, many years uh, of discussion, uh, we've created a, uh, a pathway from Mark Chagall to Isidore Goldberg Park. We've removed all the, the, the dead trees and bushes, uh, shrubs, and uh, begun the process of making Isidore Goldberg Park accessible to all who live in the vicinity uh, in the spring. There'll be uh, beautiful lighting put up there. It'll probably be paved uh, with, with asphalt. And this is something, again, that's been asked for for many years because before it was basically just used by people in the apartment building. So thanks to Public Works, and we look forward to really uh, beautifying that in the spring after, after uh, many years of discussion. And uh, one last thing. Um, very pleased and uh, that we finally secured uh, the services of a, of a crossing guard at the corner of uh, Cavendish and Kildare. It was very difficult to find someone. Uh, the gentleman has been doing a great job. We hope that he stays with it. And uh, again, uh, thanks to Public Security for their work and uh, to uh, Nadia, our associate uh, city manager and chief of human resources. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Cohen. Councillor Torchman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so like I always say, the library is much more than books, but we do have fantastic new collections that have arrived. Um, I can't wait to see the, uh, the, well, actually, I won't be at the Cats concert, but I can't wait to hear about how the cats are playing the music. Um, <laughs> uh, the, um, the, uh, there's going to be um, a, a Halloween event uh, on October 31st for kids from 4 to 6 p.m. Um, there is a, a piano duo, Jeu de Main, that'll be here on November 7th. And on November 5th uh, at 2 p.m., there's a, uh, a film called uh, Robbery of the Heart that'll be played in the, um, uh, at the library. It's, it's marking the 75th anniversary of Kristallnacht. Um, so the library really has so much more to offer. Uh, please check out the website. Um, it's, it's a wonderful place to, uh, to spend some quality time. Thank you. Continuing on that theme, thank you, Councillor Torgman. Uh, I read something that really touched me in the library report. It was called Music Time for Seniors at the Senior Drop-In Center. This is a music program given once a week by music librarian Farah Mohammed at the Seniors Drop-In Center at the ACC. This program is geared towards seniors with varying stages of dementia. Music is played each week as a way to help elicit memories and to provide conversation which generally results in well-being. Farah gave two sessions, and a very special moment occurred on September the 18th. A low-functioning client be with dementia became quite lucid during Farah's program due to music she was playing. This was a very special moment, not only for the elderly gentleman, but also for Farah and for the entire drop-in center staff. It serves to underscore the important work that Farah is doing and the library's contribution to this valuable program. This was sent in from the people of the drop-in center, so I was really pleased to see that relationship between our library programs and our drop-in center, and how these programs really benefit so many, even those who need it most. Uh, anyone else like to speak on department reports? Councilor Kajawski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so further to the Halloween theme that David mentioned, we're, we're having our first, we're calling it a spooktacular. We're not using the word Halloween because we don't want to scare anybody off. I know that's ironic. Uh, we're having an event, uh, Coaching the Dramatic Society in partnership with Parks and Recreation. 
Um, I'm not going to call it a haunted house because I don't want to turn off the younger kids. It's, it is a Halloween event for young kids, young families, something that we really haven't done in the past. There will be music, a pumpkin patch, fortune tellers, inflatables, a haunted house, uh, and other Halloween activity stations and candy and hot chocolate and apple cider. That's on uh, Sunday, I believe we start at noon at the ACC, it will be in the ACC hallway and in the gym. Um, we're also going to be having our volunteer recognition night in a couple of weeks, uh, which is really exciting. And we're having our annual kickoff for the Youth Advisory Group, which was championed by uh, Councillor Kovac and myself. We started a, a youth group for the first time uh, through the library and uh, with, in partnership with Parks and Recreation. So we're having our kickoff meeting. We haven't booked the final day yet, but it'll be sometime in the next two or three weeks. And then we'll be having uh, monthly meetings of the youth group. Um, yeah, that's it for now. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Gajewski. Lots doing in Parks and Rec. Anybody else? Okay, so moved and seconded. Moved by Councillor Sebag, seconded by Councillor Cohen. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried. We move to the next item, which is the Eleanor London Coast and Luke Public Library. Councillor Torchman. Authorization to apply for a grant. We like money. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Que le conseil autorise par, par les présentes la ville de Côte-Saint-Luc à présenter une demande d'aide financière au ministre dans le cadre de l'appel au projet culture et inclusion pour le projet de programmation accessible pour l'année budgétaire 2020. Que la directrice de la bibliothèque ou en son absence le gestionnaire des services aux familles et de la communauté soit et par, par les présents autorise à signer tous les documents ayant traité à cette demande, en particulier l'entente qui doit être signée avec le ministre. Proposé par le conseiller Torgman, appuyé par le conseiller Sebag. Est-ce qu'il y a des discussions? Yeah, so just uh, to clarify, this is an application, uh, f f uh, and to, an application to the accessibility grant. Uh, for among, amongst other things, it, it's going to give uh, programming for children with the aut autism spectrum disorder. Um, and promote healthy habits. Um, so we're just applying for a grant um, that hopefully we'll get and be able to apply to programming uh, through the library. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? So that one's carried. And we move to financial services. Councillor Burke. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the Colton Luke City Council approve the attached list of disbursements for the period of September 1st, 2019 to September 30th, 2019, for a total amount of $3,840,000 of $3,840,560.73 in Canadian funds, and that the Treasurer's Certificate dated October 15, 2019, has been issued by the City Treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the described expense. Moved by Councillor Burku, seconded by Councillor Sebag. Any discussion? Anything to highlight? No. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. We move to Human Resources 7A, Councillor Torgman. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, that the Coat St. Luke City Council approves the appointment of Talin Aktorizian as the coordinator of inst instructional services and research at the, as a permanent management position effective August 21, 2019. That treasurer certificate number 19-0121 dated September 16, 2019 has been issued by the treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the above described expenses. Thank you, Councillor Torgman. Seconded by Councillor Cohen. Any discussion? This is uh, just the hiring of a, uh, of a, in a, manager, a management position coordinator um, <coughs> for, for the library. Thank you. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. We move to 7B. Uh, Councillor Sabag. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the City of Cote Saint Luc approves the appointment of Philippe Chateauvert as the Director of Public Safety into a permanent management position effective June 3rd, 2019, that the Treasurer Certificate Number 19-0120, dated September 16, 2019, has been issued by the city treasurer attesting to the availability of the funds to cover the above described expense. Thank you, Councillor Sebag. Seconded by Councillor Cohen. Any discussion? Yes, this is uh, the official approval 
of um, uh, Philippe Chateauvert as the director of public safety, replacing uh, Jordi Rison. Right, that's making him permanent. Uh, and he's been doing a great job, so we're looking forward to having him here for many years to come. Moved and seconded, all in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. We move to item number C, Councillor Sabag. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the City of Cote St. Luke approves the hiring of Peterson Laventure as an on-call dispatcher, white-collar auxiliary position, effective August 8th, 2019, that the Treasurer Certificate number 19-0125, dated September 16th, 2019, has been issued by the City Treasurer, attesting to the availability of funds to cover the above described expense. Moved by Councillor Sabag, seconded by Councillor Cohen. Any discussion? This is just an extra body helping us, uh, making sure that we can answer all those calls the city gets 3,000 times a year. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously, and we encourage that new hire to answer all those calls and get us the information. Number D, 7D, Councillor Berku. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved, the Coats and Loop Council approves the hiring of Isabella Petrachupa uh, as an environmental technician, white collar permanent position, effective July 29th, 2019. That treasurer's certificate number 19-0119, dated September 16th, 2019 has been issued by the city treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the above described expenses. Moved by Councillor Berku, seconded by Councillor Sabag. Any discussion? Yes, I just wanted to mention that um, this uh, lady uh, talked about an environmental technician. This particular technician is um, hired to deal with um, uh, waste management. She's not dealing with horticulture, she's dealing with waste management. Um, on the issue of horticulture, we do have uh, someone who is in charge of the planting of all our flowers, and um, uh, her name is um, Joanne, Joanne Warren. Joanne Warren. Um, and I, I totally support your idea of, of having, you know, perennial fields and meadows, the, the you know, the constant uh, um, cutting of grass is, is really wasteful and non-productive, so um, we'll definitely take your suggestions up with uh, Public Works. Thank you. Thank you. So, but on this note, this, this particular person is being hired for waste, waste, waste management. So it was moved? Yeah. Moved and seconded. Uh, it has been moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously, and we move to the next item, which is the on-call library, Councillor Torchman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor that the Cote Luke City Council approves the hiring of Maria Mignello as the on-call library clerk, white-collar auxiliary position, effective August 27, 2019, that treasure certificate number 19-0122, dated September 16, 2019, has been issued by the city treasurer, attesting to the availability of funds to cover the above-described expenses. Thank you, Councillor Torchman. Seconded by Councillor Cohen. Any discussion? The hiring of on-call library clerk. All, very good. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried. We move to the next item, Councillor Burku. Status change in finance of an office agent to permanent. Okay. Um, be it resolved that Coats and Loop Council approves the change of status of Adams Azerual's employment from auxiliary office agent to permanent office agent effective August 5th, 2019. Moved by Councillor Berku, seconded by Councillor Cohen. Any discussion? This individual is being made permanent. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. And now we move to item number uh, G, Councillor Berku. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be a result, the Coats and Council approves the termination of employment of white collar auxiliary employees numbers 3115, 3154. 3264, effective September 9th, 2019. Furthermore, the termination of white collar auxiliary employees number 100 effective September 12th, 2019. Moved by Councillor Berku, seconded by Councillor Sabag. Any discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. We move to legal services 8A. Councillor Cohen. 
I so move that Cote d'Ivoire Council hereby ratifies the granting of the extension of an irrevocable letter of credit for one full year until September 25, 2020, under the same terms and conditions in order to secure the completion of the construction of the mixed-use building located within Zone HM6. Moved by Councillor Cohen, seconded by Councillor Sabag. Any discussion? That is the building on the avenue which has been brought up, which of course only recently officially changed uh, hands in terms of ownership, and this was the reason for the delay in all the repairs which we are all hoping will be fixed, will be done as soon as possible, and this line of credit, uh, this, uh, this, uh, letter of credit. Sorry, this letter of credit is necessary in order for us to, uh, until the building is complete, which we hope will, will, they'll get their final permit very soon. Moved and seconded. All in favor? I, I just want to, under, yeah, I just want to underline um, to the, our legal counsel that it says the completion of the construction of the mixed-use building located within zone HM6 as part of the resolution. Note that. Noted. Well, it's in there. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? All in favor? Now I'm in favor. Now we're in favor. All right, everybody's in favor. Beautiful. Uh, now we have two tablings. Yes. Maitre Schechter. That's, um, that is my role. Um, there are two um, matters that need to be tabled tonight. Uh, one is the um, Thank you. Um, the second tabling uh, is a reference to the upcoming by-election for the council to call it. Um, according to a, um, a decision of the municipal commission, uh, Jason Carroll, who is the assistant city clerk, is, um, will be named, um, the, it has been named to the president uh, of election of the by-election. And so therefore, he will have Thank you, Matrix Schechter. And now we move on to item number nine, public works. Councillor Torchman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Que le Conseil municipal de la ville de Côte-Saint-Luc octroie par le présent un contrat pour l'achat d'une essoucheuse Bandi à l'entreprise Douglas Powertech Inc., le seul soumissionnaire pour un montant de 70 000 dollars et 27 sous, plus les taxes applicables que les dépenses décrites seront financées par le règlement d'emprunt 2526 déjà approuvé par le ministre des Affaires municipales et Habitation, que le certificat du trésorier numéro TC19-0127, daté du 16 octobre 2019, a été émis par le trésorier de la ville, attestant à la disponibilité des fonds pour couvrir les dépenses décrites. So it's moved by Councillor Torgman, seconded by Councillor Sabag, and this deals with the purchase of a bandit stump grinder, which is required to cut our trees. Any further discussion? So this is just going to replace a, a used piece of equipment, and it'll help uh, the public works teams grind down those stumps a little bit faster. Okay. So moved and seconded. All in favor? This is only the, the trees that are need to be removed. We don't like cutting trees. Stumps. 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 We don't like cutting the trees and having to deal with the stumps, but. We do, with the Ashbourne and other problems of trees. So moved and seconded, all in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried, and we move to item number... Hold on. I think there's an opposition. There's an opposition. So, Councillor Kajewski, opposed. Please note, Councillor Kajewski is opposed. So moved with Councillor Kajewski dissenting. And now we move on to the next item, which is 8B. Councillor, oh no, Nine. 9B. Councillor Kajewski. No. Uh, no? Who wants to do it? I thought, I thought, sorry. Okay, go ahead, Councillor Kajewski. You want it? No. You want it? It's all about salt on our roads. Whoever wants to do that, you got it. Mr. Mayor, hold on one sec. Yeah. We need, unfortunately, we needed salt to keep our roads safe. There we go. Be it resolved that the City of Kutzen, uh, the Kutzenlik City Council hereby awards a contract pursuant to this Montreal Group tender to 
Compass Minerals Canada Corp for the purchase and delivery of regular road salt for the 2019-2020 snow season for the price of $102.35 per metric ton, including delivery for an estimated quantity of road salt without obligation of 6,720 metric tons for a total amount of $687,792 plus applicable taxes, plus up to 20% more at that same unit price. The Treasurer's Certificate TC19-0128 has been issued on October 16, 2019 by the City Treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the estimated volume of road salt required for the 2019 portion of the 2019-2020 snow season. That as soon as practicable at the beginning of the 2020 calendar year, the Public Works Director shall procure a Treasurer's Certificate attesting to the availability of funds to cover the anticipated expenditure relating to the 2020 portion of the 2019-2020 snow season that as these are only estimates, should actual consumption at the end of said snow season exceed 6,720 metric tons, the city's public works director shall seek an appropriate change order in accordance with the city's change order procedures and delegated authority bylaw. Thank you, Councillor Kajowski. Seconded by Councillor Sabag. Any discussion about salt? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously, we will have salt. And now we move on to 9C, uh, Councillor Kajavski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the Cote St. Luke City Council hereby approves and adopts the letter renewal agreement, 7th renewal, effective November 1st, 2019, which renews the original um, agreement for the dumping of snow dated May 15th, 2009, as sub subsequently amended by the first renewal, second renewal, third renewal, fourth renewal, fifth renewal and sixth renewal between the City of Cote St. Luke and the Town of Hampstead for a term of one snow season, namely 2019-2020, on such terms, conditions, and amendments as are indicated in the seventh renewal that, said, that the City of Cote St. Luke's General Council is hereby authorized to sign the aforesaid seventh renewal on behalf of the City. Moved by Councillor Kajaski, seconded by Councillor Sabag. Any discussion? Seventh renewal. Seventh renewal. Uh, Hampstead uh, using our snow dump. Okay, for a fee, obviously. For a fee. Correct. So moved and seconded all in favor? Anyone opposed? The district councillor. Okay, thank you. Uh, it is uh, approved with councillor Cohen dissenting. Now we move on to item uh, 10, which is urban development. No, it's park even pool. Where are we? Yeah, we did that. We have the park even, we have one more, right? Park Haven Pool. Approval of additional funds for Park Haven Pool. Okay, Urban 10A, Councillor Kajowski, Park Haven Pool. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the Cote Luke City Council hereby approves payment of the additional funds necessary to complete the works under Project C-07-17C2 for contractor services related to the rehabilitation for the Park Haven outdoor pools in an amount not to exceed $107,800 plus applicable taxes to Ciment Projeté et Piscine Orléans, Inc that the described expenses shall be financed from the city's cumulative surplus project number SUR 2018-REC12 at December 31st, 2018, that the city treasurer has issued a treasurer certificate TC19-0130 on October 16th, 2019, attesting to the availability of funds to cover the described expenses. Moved by Councillor Kajaski, seconded by Councillor Cohen. Councillor Cohen. All right, so that's about the pool. Any discussions about our renovated pool, additional expense? Beautiful. Okay, well, it did come uh, as an estimate that our additional expense would have been 200,000. Luckily, it was 107,000. So um, deals with a lot of different uh, issue, things that we wanted to include, that we were able to include, that make that pool renovation a wonderful project. So moved and seconded, all in favor? Anyone opposed? You voted in favor? I'm in favor. Carried unanimously. We move to item number 10B, Councillor Berger. Okay. So, be it resolved that the City Council hereby awards a professional service contract to Cardin Julien Inc., the lowest bidder under the law, for a total amount of $137,500 plus applicable taxes that furthermore the city may consider an amount of 10% plus applicable taxes for any potential contingencies and extras if required that shall first be approved according to the city's procedures and that the described expenses shall be financed from loan bylaw 2445-2 
previously approved by the Ministère des Affaires municipales et de l'Habitation, that the Treasurer's Certificate Number TC 19-0129, dated October 16, 2019, has been issued by the City Treasurer, attesting to the availability of funds to cover the described expenses. And I just want to mention, since I didn't do it at the beginning, that this is a contract for uh, professional services for the refurbishing of the City Hall building envelope of the City of Cote St. Luke. And, um, it's uh, pursuant to two conforming bidders. Moved by Councillor Berku, seconded by Councillor Torchman. Any discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. We move to item number 11. Thank you, Major Schechter. Now we moved on to item number 11, which is urban development uh, 11A, Councilor Kajaski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the Kotsim City Council hereby accepts and ratifies the encroachment agreement between the city and the owners of the property at 624 Wolseley, that the city's general council be authorized to sign on the city's behalf the deed of servitude of tolerance, which gives effect to the aforementioned encroachment agreement. Thank you, Councillor Kajafsky. Seconded by Councillor Sabag. Any discussion? Okay, so that deals with the fence that we came to an agreement with a resident regarding their fence. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously, and we move to item 11.1. .1, which will defer. Which we're deferring. We'll suspend the meeting. We're suspending the meeting now, I guess. So we have to suspend the meeting? Yeah. And do our other. Discussions. It's the same. Then, it's, the two right, items. I know, I know. So we're just suspending because we need to pass this later. Right. right. Okay, caucus. Right? <laughs> Charles, <laughs> let's go. We are um, so moved by Councillor Berku. Second, we have to discuss that item. Shalom. We, we'll suspend the meeting. What? Yep. And then we'll have to come back and then yeah. we'll do it. Sure. Yeah. We'll suspend for we'll five minutes. We'll suspend for five minutes five and then minutes. we'll be back. Moved by Councillor Berku, second by Councillor Cohen. All in favor of, of uh, suspension. Yeah, we'll suspending. be back. Five minutes. Let's go discuss that item. Now I'd like to call to reopen our general public meeting of today. Uh, and, uh, do we need to move and second that or we just reopen it? Major Schechter, do we need to move and second that opening? Not really. Okay, so we're back into the meeting. Now we are on item number 11.1 .1 of the regular council meeting. Councillor Berku. 11.1. Right. So be it resolved that the site planning and architectural integration program received September 17, 2019, showing the construction of a new two-story family detached dwelling on lot 156, 2055 at 5782, 5784 and prepared by Mr. A. Cohn, architect, following the planning advisory committee meeting of the August 16, 2019, be approved according to the provisions of Chapter 14 of Bylaw 2217 of the City of Cote St. Luke. Moved by Councillor Berku, seconded by Councillor Cohen. Any discussion? Yeah, friendly amendment. Friendly amendment. Yeah, the numbers are inverted. Five eight seven two. Five eight seven two, and I and I read five seven eight two. Yeah, it's it's a mistake on the resolution. Yeah, five eight seven two five eight five eight seven four. Right. Okay. Moved by Councillor Berku, seconded by Councillor Cohen. All in favor? Carried unanimously. And now we go to the minor exemption for the same address. Right. Councillor Berku. Okay. So be it resolved in accordance with provisions of bylaw G18 0005, the request for a minor exemption regarding the property located at 5872 and 5874 Shalom. Lot 1562055, B and is hereby approved. The whole is more amply delineated hereunder. The request is in order to allow the construction of a new, of a two-family detached dwelling without having to provide a garage with four interior parking spaces, two parking spaces already existing. The whole notwithstanding the provisions of zoning bylaw 2217, Article 7-2-1B. Moved by Councillor Berku, seconded by Councillor Cohen. Any discussion? All in favor of the minor exemption? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. And now we move to item 12, the stance on the issues at the Agglomeration Council. Councillor Berku, item 12. 
Well, sure, or Councillor Car uh, whoever has it in front of them. What, um, Here you go. Okay. So, be it resolved, the Council take the following stance in view of any Guam Region Council meetings to be held in November 2019 as follows. To authorize the Mayor or his duly authorized replacement to make any decisions he deems necessary in the best interest of the City of Cote St. Luke and its residents regarding the items on the agenda of the Agglomeration Council meeting to be held in November 2019 based on the information to be presented during those meetings. Moved by Councillor Berku, seconded by Councillor Sabag. Any discussion? All in favor? All in favor, Councillor Kutaski. Thank you. Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. And now we go on to other business. Any other business? Now we go on to the second question period, dealing with questions on anything that was on the agenda tonight. Questions? Marissa Seidel, please come forward. I actually have three questions. Perfect. Um, when you, uh, number 8A, when you um, say the authorization to extend an irrevocable letter of credit for the Avenue building, you said for a year. Does that mean that you're giving them a full year to finish this building? No, it just means that the irrevocable letter of credit is good for a year and we would have to renew it in another year if we still were dealing with that situation. But it means we have it for a year. Right, Maitre Schechter? Yes, that's, well, that's correct. But why do we keep extending it? Why don't we just tell them to finish or else? This is just protection for us if we need to keep that money. Oh, I see. You have, I understand. Money. Okay. Um, well, I just, yeah. seems to me. Um, okay. <clears throat> Following up on 9C, um, adoption of the agreement for the snow dump. I remember when I lived on Mark Chagall, there was a big problem with the tailgating. And I'm wondering if when we are allowing the city of Hampstead to, I'm assuming they use their own subcontractors to yes. clean the snow. So I'm wondering what methods are put in place to protect the owners that live around the Mark Chagall properties to make sure that they're not disturbed by the noise. Because if you recall, it was a huge problem when. Uh... We're, we're, I have to say last winter, we were down to two residents who were disturbed by it, one of whom you know. Uh, and the other is someone living in an apartment building, and two is too many, not, but, but our public works department did a great job at really policing that, and I think they've cut down on the tailgating a lot. The problem is subcontracted, and then a new group comes in, and they, didn't, they, they weren't told, so we're being as vigilant as we can on it, and it helps when residents call, and, and, and I said I had two only, and in fact, the one that you know barely called last year. The yeah, person in the apartment building called quite regularly and he kind of stakes them out. So that's fine. I told him to keep doing it. Okay, great. Um, can I ask a question, a follow-up question to Mr. Itman's question? It's only issues that are on the agenda. Uh -huh. Well, is Kerwin Park on the agenda somewhere? If it relates somewhere. to the agenda, go ahead. Okay. I'm not sure I understand something with regards to the uh, the answer that we're getting on a regular basis with regards to the tender. I'm, I'm simply asking because I'm a general contractor and Which I often, tender? pardon me, Which the tender for Kerwin Park's renovation. It's not on the agenda. It's not on the agenda. I think so. Sorry? It's not on the agenda. Well, we're not, I mean, we can talk offline. Oh, well, I'll just come back next month. It's fine. Well, um, we can, we can tell, talk offline tomorrow. But. No, no, I'm good. I'm happy to come back next month. It's important for us all to be engaged. Um, the last question I have is just a point of uh, uh, something I'm unsure of. We were just all chatting about it. Um, not suggesting that Mr. Provo is unqualified for the job, but I'm simply wondering how does someone who worked for the city get the, the, uh, obtain the responsibility of being the person who is the president of the election for a city council? Uh, just in the law, actually, by default, it would be the city clerk who would be the returning officer for this type of election. Now, we've decided that it's going to be delegated to me. Okay. Um, because it's a by-election or just an election in general? Election in general or by-election, it's the same thing. It's the same procedure. Um, but with obviously, with regards to separating my responsibilities as city clerk and my responsibilities as returning officer, they will be separate. 
church and state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I get it, but I'm just wondering in the last election for the city. It's always the I, city clerk, it was Mrs. Habro. When she was city clerk, it was Jonathan Schechter. When he, uh, you can. You can decide to go out and once hired an outside guy because okay. uh, they decided they had too much work and yeah. they wanted to hire an outside guy. Mark. But in the in the law, it is the city clerk. In That's the law, it is okay. And fantastic. Thank you. Was, uh, and you need permission if you hire somebody outside from the minister. Um, anything else? So move uh, for adjournment. So move, Mr. Mayor. Seconded by Councillor Kajafsky. All in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you.